Today on Coding 101, we check out your viewer submissions and move on with Python with lists. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Coding 101 is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Coding 101 is brought to you by Squarespace, the all in one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free two week trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code CODING. <laughs> That was, a, that was different. <laughs> Welcome to Coding 101. It's the Twitch show where we introduce you to the wonderful world of the Code Monkey. I'm Father Robert Balasser. And I am Shannon Morris. And for the next 30 minutes, we are going to get you all coded up on everything you need to know to be a Python code warrior. A Python code a Python warrior. That's code a Python. No, warrior. don't say that five times fast. <laughs> That's right. And we're going to show you some of the more basic parts of the computing programming language known as Python. This comes straight from you, from our chat room and from our Google Plus community. People who said that they'd like us to move a little bit more slowly, especially on the basic parts. So we're going to show you one of the most basic data structures you've got in Python Ooh. and explain why it's important. But before we get there, you, you've got a hard job. You got some great I, work submitted. Yes, we did. We got quite a few very interesting viewer submissions. But first, I wanted to go ahead and recap really quick uh, downloaded, downloading Python for your own computer if you haven't done that already. It's very simple to do. You just go over to python.org, download the Python 2.7.6 version MSI installer plus the packages. Very easy. It's just right underneath the download link. And then let's go ahead and open some scripts, shall we? Right. So I wanted to use my example for you. I just wrote this in Notepad. It was very simple to do. And then I just saved it as a .py. So mm -hmm. I just clicked File Save .py. And when I open the script, it looks like this, python.exe. So it says, what's your favorite number? What's your favorite number, Padre? 12. 12, OK. What's your least favorite number? One. One. It's so lonely. Your favorite number minus your least favorite number would be 11. There we go. Huh. Thank you. Now, what's your screen name? Padre SJ. Padre SJ. So I type that in and hit enter, and it says, thanks, Padre SJ. Your screen name rocks. Press enter to exit. And that's it. Very, very simple, very easy to write. And if I right click on here and I go to edit with idle, you can actually see how I wrote the code. So this is exactly what we showed you last week. I ran into one little error right here when I was typing this out. I had to include name, space, plus, space, and then quotes. Uh, the exclamation mark, your screen name rocks to make it run correctly. The first time I ran it, it just automatically closed because there was a bug. I didn't include that plus. So apparently that is important. So make sure you have that in there if you want to do the same kind of script. And then you just click Save and Save As. And I named it Shannon Example 12. And down here, you'll see it's called a Python file. So python.py. Yeah, the extension is all Actually, you know what? Let's use this to go over some of the very basic, basic stuff. Uh, actually, Jason, sure. if you could go, go back to her screen, we could review some of the lessons from the very first episode so that you could sort of recapture up with uh, everything we did with Python last week. The first thing you're going to see in her code, as, as Jason zooms in here, is print. Print is really that simple. It is just print, and then in, in quotations, you put what you want to print. You could also print just, as you see below, that, that, that set the, uh, the third print statement. You could put print thanks, and then a comma, which concatenates with name, which is a variable. So printing a, a phrase, printing a string, or printing a value, it pretty much all works the same. The other thing we want to point out here is the declaration of variables. Remember in C sharp, we had to go through that whole rigmarole of saying it's going to be an int, it's going to be a float, it's going to be a string. Here, we just say the name. The name of my variable is going to be first thing, and then that <laughs> variable will be filled with raw input, which yes. is the Python command to say, take something from the user, take something there from the go. keyboard. And then in the parentheses, 
You notice how she has a, a string inside of quotations. What that function raw input lets you do is it lets you print that out and then wait for the user to respond. Again, it's not that complicated, and, and she does it several times, which shows mm -hmm. you that you're going to use the same techniques over and over. But right. Shannon, way to go. Great way to encapsulate yeah, everything from lesson one. Yeah, very simple to use, and I, I just wanted to take everything we learned and just stick it into one code. It was, it, yeah, it was nice and easy, so I really enjoyed doing that one. I also had a couple of viewer submissions to show you this week. The first one comes from Benjamin Frost, and this is over in our Google Plus community if you want to join that. I went ahead and copied and pasted his code and created my own little notepad file. If I open this, it says, Asking Program by Ben. When you have answered a question, please enter to continue. What is your first name? So I'll just put Shan, last name, Moores. When were you born? 19... <laughs> Let's say 84. Not really, but that's okay. There we go. Where do you live? Cali. And how many kids do you have? Ten. <laughs> uh, ten. Oh, ten. Okay. Thank you. Ten. So you are between 29 and 30 years old. That's true if I was born in 1984. <laughs> you live in Cali and have ten kids, which means you probably are possibly going to have 10 to 20 grandkids. Now, so he did some math right here, and I'm gonna show you what that looks like when I click edit with idle. So when I open this, you'll see down here. So he chooses the grandkids. He's basically choosing to say, hey, if each of your kids had two more kids themselves, multiply that by two, so you'd end up with 10 to 20 grandkids. Yeah. That's it. Very so simple, simple, use, simple math. And he has but multiplication in there. Yeah, we love it. You take in some some information from the user and you give something back out. That's nice that's and essentially easy. what programming does. The second one I wanted to share with you is from Santi Esco, also in the Google Plus community. Now, if I click on this one, I'm going to show you how I was able to open this on my computer. So I copy and paste this, and then I'm going to open Notepad, and I'll just scoot this over for you. So I paste the code into here, and then I click Print, Save As, or File Save As, excuse me. And I'm going to save that over in my desktop, where all my other files are, under Python. Python. Yeah, I made a pretty little Python folder. So I'm going to call this senti.py. Now when I open it, let's click on that. OK, welcome. Please enter your name. Jen, enter your last name, Moose. Enter your age. 12. Why do they all want to know your age? So that one automatically closed. Did you notice uh, that? Ah, yes, yes. Because I'm on. Because I'm on. That's on Windows. right. You're on. You're on Windows. You're yep. on the shell. Which is why we always put that raw input at the That's end right. to say hit the enter key to continue. So I'm just going to copy that from my code right here. Raw input. Copy. And I'll just stick that into his code. And remember, folks, this is one of the things that we learned with, with uh, Dale, which is if you're using Windows, the, the, the terminal window won't stay open once the program is done. So what we do is we kind of cheat. We put another input in there that waits until you hit Enter to clear the screen. There we go. There we go. So this one is just a quick input and output. Shannon, last name is Morse. Your age is 12. <laughs> Fantastic. Obviously now, one of the things we love about this is you, you saw how easy it is to write programs in Python. You don't have to turn it into a binary. You don't have to turn it into an exe right. if you've got the code. So in, the, in her case, she wrote in a notepad. In, in the, the, the case of our, our fans in the, in the uh, Google Plus page, they just gave us a link to their program. You can just copy and paste it into the idle shell and it will run it for you. We'll compile it and you're good to go. That's yeah. one of the powers of an interpreted language. And we should mention in our show notes, of course, we always have, have the GitHub link as well. So you can download all of the code that is shown in the show so that you can play with it on your computer. It's very easy to download from GitHub. I was able to download all of our Python code so far by just hitting the zip file. And that's it. Right. Super. And the other thing to remember is, folks, we always put all the code from our show into that GitHub. So if there's something that you're, you're a little curious about as the show runs on, don't worry about it. Don't freak out. You can always go to the show page. It'll be right there. You'll get an exact copy. You don't have to copy anything off the screen. All we're trying to show you are the basic principles that make it work. Yes. Let's move on. Well, Snubs, I'd love to move on, but before we do that, you want to take a little bit of a break? Why don't we talk about one of our sponsors? Oh, which one is it? A brand spanking new sponsor. Yay! Now, you, you, you may know them from the Twit TV network, but this is their first time on Coding 101, so we want to throw them some love. Uh, they, of course, 
our square space. Now life is better in a square space. If you've ever tried to create your own site, you know that you need a platform that is easy to use, that is dependable, that is always up, and that actually isn't all that expensive. Oh, we love them because Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that makes it easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. I've used them in the past for all the micro sites that I have to make for my, my day job. They love Squarespace because they don't need any programming understanding, any programming knowledge. They don't need to know how backend servers work. They just buy their account, choose a template, and go. It's really that simple. Now, here are some of the reasons why you'll love Squarespace. They are constantly improving their platform, so they're not just static. They're not sitting back on their laurels. They give you new features all the time, new designs, and even better support than pretty much anyone else in the field. Their beautiful designs are just that. They're fantastic, and they're unique. It's not the cookie-cutter stuff that you're going to see from many of their competitors. Squarespace has over 25 beautiful templates for you to quickly build your own personal or business site. They also have the best mobile experience. You know how sometimes you'll, you'll choose a site and maybe it looks good on your computer, but then you try to access it on your phone and it's just a no-go? Well, Squarespace has developed templates with responsive designs, which mean that the site will automatically restructure itself to look great on any device, a smartphone, a tablet, or a computer. It's also easy to use. If you want help, Squarespace has live chat and email support 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Help is never further than a phone call away. Plus, there is a completely redesigned customer help site for easier access to self-help articles and video workshop. Squarespace also includes their own hosting, which means it's a one-stop shop. They take care of it with a distributed network that does not go down, period. It's also inexpensive, way more inexpensive than you think it should be. It starts at just $8 a month and includes a free domain if you sign up for a year. And even their code is beautiful. If you are a coder, jump in and see how they actually created their templates. And trust me, you're going to be impressed. Now, what we love is that Squarespace has a developer platform. If you really want to dig into site customization and developer accounts, well, they're for you. Their developer accounts never expire. You can take as much time as you need before launching your site, and you pay nothing until you go live. How about that? A, a company that will actually let you play with their tech and only pay when you actually publish. Now, the developer plat platform features complete control. You get to edit all the code that affects the display of your website. Every line of HTML, CSS, or JavaScript is under your control. They also have Git integration. Every template is a Git rep repository. Now, version control comes standard. You can connect to templates via standard Git or SFTP. They also provide developer tools, less pre-processing, JSON templating, script combo comboing, retina-ready responsive image handling, and oh so much more. It's a developer's dream. So here's what we want you to do. We want you to start a free two-week trial with no credit card required and start building your website. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use the offer code CODING to get 10% off and to show your support for Coding 101. We thank Squarespace for their support of Coding 101. A better web awaits, and it starts with your new Squarespace account. Now, Shannon, what do you say we get right to the ivory tower? We've talked a lot about variables, both in this module and in the last module, yes, right? Yes, we did. Because without variables, you can't you really... You have nothing. You have nothing, right? You can hard code a program to yeah. do something, but you need some way to to maintain temporary data or pull data in from users. That's why we have variables. Mm -hmm. But did you know there's something even more useful than a variable? Hmm, how could something be more useful than a variable? Well, imagine this. Imagine if you didn't just have a loose collection of variables, var1, var2, var3, var4, whatever it's going to be, mm -hmm. but you could start grouping together similar data. Ah. Like, let, for example, let's say I wanted to get the first name of everyone in the studio. Mm -hmm. I could say name one equals name two equals That name would take three. a long time though. It takes we a long time. That. Yeah, exactly. And it's not that useful because all you do is you end up with a jumble of variables that could be a name, it could right. be the name of a product, it could be just <laughs> lunch, whatever it's going to be. Inside of Python and in fact inside of all programming language, there's a thing called structured data. And when we get structured data and data structures, it allows us to group together similar variables or variables that we think should be related to one another and create a list. Ah, 
Hence yeah. list. Hence list, right? But does does that make sense? Do you, does that it make does. sense why you'd want to group them together? Yeah, it totally makes sense. I wouldn't want to spend the time to make uh, name a different variable for each and everything that I enter. Right. That would just kind of be annoying if they're all comparable comparable to each other. Yeah. Now inside of a list we do just have variables. They are variables but they are s strung together in a sequence and we're going to show you exactly how you access that sequence, how Ooh. you initialize it, how you fill it with values, and then how you change and output those values. That's the, the part of the lesson that we're going to try to bring you here in episode two. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to show you the syntax of a of a of a of a list of a sequence. Okay. Now, uh, if you go ahead and go over to my computer, Jason, this is what it looks like when you want to create. Oh, if, if this will work. If you want to create a oh, hold on, my computer has suddenly gone wonky. If you want to go ahead and create a list, the uh, the way we're going to do it is you need to do the name of the list, then equals, and then in brackets you want value one, value two, value three, value four, oh. whatever that's going to be. So, for okay. example, if this was going to be first names, I could I could say the name of the list is first name, and then equal, and then I could put in quotations Robert comma, in quotations, snubs, oh. comma, in quotations, Brian, comma, in quotations, Leo. And I could list the names, the first names of all the people in the Burke house, and then I aim, end it with a semicolon. Oh, that, so we have a semicolon again. There we go. Yeah, semicolon's back, right? But that just tells me that I'm done with this list. That tells me that I've, I've, I've finished it up. This is the basic structure of any list that you declare in Python. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Is that so easy to does. understand? <laughs> right. And uh, the reason why we want to do that is because we want what's called the index. Okay. So if you think about that bracket, once I have those, those values inside that data structure, if I use the name of my list, mm -hmm. so let's say it's first name. Right. And then I put the bracket, and then I put a number. What in it's, the middle of your bracket? In the, num in the middle of the bracket. What I'm doing is I'm actually calling forth the value of a particular element inside that data structure. Oh. Right. Starting from zero. So the very first one is zero because remember in programming we start at zero. Right. So go back to that, that previous example. If the first one is Robert and that the second one zero. is Snubs, is that that, which one. one. And the third one is Mark, that would be two. And the, the fourth one is Leo, that would be three. Right. right. So if I wanted to call that, I would just put the name of the list and then in brackets, three. Oh, that's easy. Right? Okay. Okay, so that's how I address it. Now let me actually show you what that looks like when you start using it. Okay. Now we want to access these values contained within the list. So the first thing we're going to do is we're, we're going to fill the list with values that we actually want to use. I've got some uh, pre-coded examples here. Let me go ahead and get rid of this stuff. And we're going to do this. So we are creating a list okay. called C101, coding 101. And it's equal to Padre SJ, Snubs, Dale Chase, Cranky Hippo. Okay. So when I hit enter, that line has now been entered in, right? So I have just cool. created a list called C101 with those four entries, those four values, right? Got it. Okay, now, quick question. If I wanted to, add, if I wanted to print mm -hmm. one of those, let's say I printed position one, what would it print? It would print Snubs. Exactly, that was right? one. Right. That's a one, which is actually the second position. Just, right. just a quick test because some people get kind of messed up with that. Remember, whenever we're dealing with these, we always start at zero. All right, now, we've created the list, but now we want to actually do something with it. So what I want to do is I want to say go ahead and print everything that's in the list. So I'm, I'm going to do it the, the easy way, the sort of the, 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 the broke way, and, which is the this. Way. I'm just going to say print. Oh. The following members are members. The following are members of the coding 101 team. And then see what I'm doing? Print C101 index yes. one uh, or index zero. Okay, so you have the bracket brackets and then the the variable number or whichever one. Exactly, it is. The, the index number. Index number. So when I hit enter, it just does that. That's cool. So it dumped the index back out to the screen. You should probably put some commas in between those. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We weren't too worried about that. I just, I wanted to do a, a dump of, uh, of all the names that were inside the list back out to the screen. Okay. But you could see where this could become handy, right? Yes, it's, definitely. Do you remember something from, uh, from C Sharp that we maybe could use mm. to fill up that list rather than hard coding it? Ooh. Oh, are I'm, you? 
Scotland, the, the loopies. loops. Yeah. yeah. So if we wanted to, we could say use the. We could remember how there's a counter, an increment or decrement yes. counter. We could start it at zero and then say something for every time this loop runs, take the next data point and put it in the index of that incre of that oh, increment number. You're totally integrating lists into loops. There I we love go. It. Now we're not going to do that yet. We're not. We, we don't want to blow oh, your but mind. I'm ready. I want to do it. But no, 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 no. <laughs> we're not going to sneak ahead. Okay. But just know that we could do that, and that's that's, that's cool. the power of the list that I want you to see as we head further into Python. That's probably one of the things that you will end up doing. Oh, that's fun. I okay. love it. Okay. Now it's not just yeah. a matter of filling up a list and then dumping it out to the screen. If we did that, that would be kind of silly. That's that's actually not all that useful. What we can do is we can change what's going on inside the list itself. This this is one of the the uh, the things that we we need to learn because it's it's actually important. So. If I wanted to update, let's say value number three. So value number three is is what? Or let's say I want to enter, uh, I want to change value number four, which is Cranky Hippo, right? I'm going to say, wait a minute, that's not Brian's real name. He's not actually called Cranky Hippo. His real name is Brian Burnett. So what I'm going to do, if I can get from my cursor, is I'm going to do this. C101 oh. index three, which is the last entry. That's the number. That's the fourth right. one is equal to Brian, Brian Burnett. Burnett. So all you have to do is type in the name of your list plus the index number, wherever his, his name falls, equals, and then in quotations, whatever you want to change it to. Right, exactly. So here we go. Now that I've updated that, if I put back that uh, the last piece of code, which just printed everything that was in the list, yeah. which again was print, and then in quotations, the following are members of the Coding 101 team, I get something that looks like this. And that last awesome. entry has changed to Brian Burnett. Oh, that's cool. That's okay. so easy. Now, this is messy. This is kind of screwy. That's this, okay. It's okay, because what we want you to see is we want you to see how easy it is to work with lists. Right. Again, lists are a fundamental part of programming. You need to have data structures in order to go beyond just simple hello worlds. What we want to do is we want to give you this little bit of theoretical understanding so that as we move on, and we do things like, oh, I don't know, Google Doc integration, mm -hmm. you'll be able to import data from an external Ooh. source into a data structure that keeps everything nice and neat. Oh, that's going to be fun. Does this, does this make, all, make sense or am I, am I it going way too fast? It makes sense to me, but of course, if you guys all ever, ever have questions, we'll be happy to show, share them on the show and you can share those with us. Uh, what's our email address? Uh, I, well, I, we don't use I don't email. Think we, have an we, email. Don't, we don't use an email address. What we use is we use our Google Plus community, right? Yes, we do. It's gplus.to slash twitcoding101. And also our Twitter addresses, which we'll give you at the end. So if you want to ask us a question, wait around to the end. Now, Shannon, I feel like we're missing something. We are. I feel kind of lonely in here. Yeah, it's just the two of us. I mean, normally we, on? we've got like a co-warrior or something, right? I think we do. I, I think, I think. Do we have Dale? Yeah, Jason, do, do we have someone we could bring in who maybe could shine? Oh, oh whoa, Dale. this is new. Okay. Oh, look, he's flying in. He's <laughs> one with the force. <laughs> Dale Chase with Discovery Networks. How, are, sorry, sorry, Discovery Digital Networks. How are you today? I'm great. Great to see you guys. It's great to have you back. I see that you've got a nice, uh, you're helping us with a USB headset, so uh, we get a little bit more Daleness in our ears. Yeah, you can hear the, the bass of my voice now. Oh, actually. yeah. Oh. <laughs> Wow, uh, suddenly I don't really want to program anymore. No, no, no. Okay. Wow, that was way too much. Okay, Dale. So, thank you. So, we are talking about lists. We're specifically talking about how to get data into and out of lists, and then may maybe doing a few things with comparing, comparing the actual elements within a list. Okay. What do you got? Um, well, I don't actually have anything comparing the elements, which I can probably throw together really quick, though. Um, what I've got is a list that I put together of uh, a few Doctor Who companions. Ooh. Oh, okay. And uh, essentially just prints, uh, it calls uh, the third position, which is Rose Tyler, and prints that out uh, in a statement. Oh, that's cool. Um, so I can just let that go off for you really quickly. Uh, yeah. So the Doctor once traveled with Rose Tyler, um, who is, as you can see, companions two in my print statement on line five here. Right, right. And then at the end, you put a plus. And, and a period. A period. Now, yeah. we got to ask you, Dale. So this, what you gave us is exactly what I asked for, which is something crazy basic. So this, this exact example is going to go into our show notes so people can, can play with lists. What you've done here, the very first line is going to create a list called companions, 
and then it's going to fill it with the values of Sarah Jane Smith in position one, Leela in position two, Rose Tyler in position three. So that's zero, one, and two. Then that second line is going to print first the string the doctor once traveled with, comma, which is going to concatenate it with the value of list called companions index two, which is actually position three, plus a period. And then you're going to, you do raw input because again, you want the window to stay open. Right. Now I do have an alternate version, which uses actually a basic loop, uh, a basic Python loop that'll print out every uh, entry in the list. Well, let's you see that. that? I want to yeah. see it. Yeah. So I'll just... Uh, do it. Do it. <laughs> oh, so you put it down there. He just commented, he commented it, out. it out. He's smart. Perfect. I know. Dale so, is smart. That's I, why I he's I would do our, that if I were as smart as Dale. That's why he's our <laughs> So what I've got here is, so there are a few different ways to do loops in Python, but this is a very simple way to go through a list. Uh, if you're not really concerned with doing it numerically, if you just want the contents, you can do for, and you just create a new value here essentially, which is gonna become what you work with. So I've got for companion in companions, which is you know the, the, the variable here, and then I just iterate through each one in the print statement. And so I call companion oh. and then concatenate the rest there. Uh, so let's see what that looks like. I'll just uh, clear this. And, and now we have three statements. Oh, there that's we go. cool. Yeah. So what you told it to do was you said, okay, take this list and go through all the elements in the list and go ahead and print them out the screen. Exactly. Now, we could, theoretically, we could use this same sort of programming to fill the list, right? We don't have to hard code the list into the actual program. That's correct. Um, you wouldn't use this sort of loop. Right, right, right. But you could essentially... Uh... Yeah, the problem with using... You couldn't use this kind of loop because this loop actually depends on a list that has already been preset to determine how many times it's going to run. Exactly. You would actually need some way to tell the loop how many times it's actually going to go before it stops. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. So it doesn't just keep on going and going. Right, right. right. So, I mean, you could use, like, for example, a, a while loop. Uh, and exactly. You could have a, a user character at the end that says, do you want to continue, yes or no? Oh. And if you say yes, it, it does another iteration of the loop. If you say no, it's going to go ahead and end the loop, and you've got your list. Ooh. I could totally start doing my games again. Yeah, yeah. Yay, text adventure games. Now, Dale, we got to ask this because this is actually coming around in the uh, in in the chat room. People are saying, "Oh, this looks a lot like arrays." And Ooh. this this essentially this is what Python does for arrays, right? This is a basic data structure that allows you to create an array of information. Yeah, this is Python's native array, essentially, yeah. yeah. yeah, And just like an array, we could actually have lists of lists. We could embed lists within lists oh, really? if we wanted to make multi-dimensional lists. So why would you want to do that? Uh, well, you know, sometimes people like more complicated data structures, so they have better ways to store things. Oh, sometimes okay. people want to be able to refer to things by a coordinate system. Uh, what I prefer oh. is I actually like to keep my lists nice and simple. So I probably wouldn't do that. But Dale, do you do you have much call for doing lists within lists? Uh, yeah, actually, I an array of arrays uh, often. Uh, if let's say, or it will, we'll look ahead to looking at a Google spreadsheet. If I uh, call a um, a row in a spreadsheet, uh, that I get back an array. Right, right. Um, but as I go through each row of the spreadsheet, I'm creating an array of each of these rows, which right. is exactly that. Yeah, which it's a nice way of saying we could we could take all the information out of a spreadsheet and mm -hmm. we could organize it by saying this is a list and this is a list and this is a list oh, and this is a cool. list. And so now we have everything organized by according either to the rows or their columns, depending on how you wanted right. to do it, and you have lists within the larger list. That's really awesome. Yeah, it's actually, it's, it's oh, that's what fun. we do a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so Dale, let me ask you this. As you're looking through this lesson, as you're looking through lists, what else do you think people need to know before they take your lessons and go forth and list up? Well, if they're looking to try uh, looping on their own to create the list, uh, what they'll want to do is something like this. If you want to just look back at my screen really quickly, um, is just do something like a, a new list 
equals oh wait no it's a new list i believe it's something like this right right there it is um value so to kind of create um without knowing what the index is add that value to the list you want to put the brackets in front of the variable name and that will just automatically create the index for you as you continue to just add values right right yeah. And again, the reason why we're doing this is because when we're dealing with Python and variables in Python, variables in Python are dynamically created. They're dynamically initialized, dynamically mm-hmm. declared. So unlike C-sharp, where we would have to declare the array at the start of the program here, we can actually have it continue to add as we add values. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, Dale, this wasn't the, uh, the only example you showed me the other night. I mean, you were starting to get kind of crazy towards the end. Uh, when, when when you think of the ways that you use lists, is there an example you could give us that won't blow our young users' minds just yet? Just yet. Okay, well, maybe we want to uh, add or remove uh, things from the list. That's what we're looking for. Ooh. All right. Um, okay, well, something that is very useful. I don't know. This, I, don't, I don't think this should be too mind-blowing, but it's definitely... It's useful. A way yeah. that's useful. I'm going to go with pop. pop. Can I can I go with pop? Yeah, go ahead and do pop. Let's. You know what? Yeah, pop. We're doing pop. Add pop. Okay. Um, so this is not adding anything. This will be. This will remove an item from the list, while allowing you to use that item, um, as it's deleted from the list. What? Which is that's that, confusing. No, no, that no. no th- this is perfect. Imagine this. Okay. Imagine you were doing a sort. Right, so okay. you wanted to resort everything. Yeah. According to let, let's say we want to do by first name. Right. What you'd want is you'd want some sort of algorithm that would sort from the list to a new list that's actually sorted. Right. But you want a way to make sure that you don't double enter. Right. Oh. So you could do this. You would you would pop it. In other words, you would use it as you move it, but then it would remove it from the old list so that you oh, don't have to okay. worry about sorting it multiple times. Oh, okay. Okay, I get that. All right. Show us show us some pop, Dale. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my initial statement, and now, actually, you know what? Let's use this in conjunction with the for loop. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. So what we'll do here is now it'll loop through, and with each uh, iteration, uh, we'll let's see what's the best way to show this off. Uh, oh, well, no, yeah, no, since, no, since I'm only since I'm only grabbing zero. Yeah. That'll become so. Each time we go through, what's left in the list will become zero. Correct. Oh. And you'll see the same kind of uh, statement that we had before, but now I'm only using one index, which, and that should work. Actually, no. Is that going to work? Uh, Do you have I, to change companion, companions com- to companion? Actually, wait. Mm, uh, no. Actually, that yeah. should work. Actually, that'll work. That will work. Let's run it and see. Yeah. It did. So, okay, so it did yeah. Sarah Jane and Leela, and so it didn't do the last one. I got a little bit of a off by one error here, I guess. Um, it didn't get to Rose. Well, what, yeah. So while you troubleshoot that, what's what's happening yeah. is as this is going through the list. So as that loop is going through the data in the list, as it prints it out to screen, it's removing it from the list. Got it. Okay. And it, this so folks, it's basically pushing the next one up to the front of the list. Yeah. And folks, what this is, is this is data management. This is, again, one of those basic things that you're going to have to do whenever you're writing a program, especially a program that starts to grow beyond just a single page or a single set of lines. You're going to have to figure out a way to manage your variables and manage your data flow so that it doesn't become this crazy, ridiculous, overwhelming hydra of lists hydra. and variables. The, pop, pop is used all the time. Whenever we want to make sure we 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 want to make sure that we're we're properly managing the data in a program. Now, can you use other types of pops? I guess would be my question. Uh, like <laughs> mm, pop. <laughs> like, can you can you add things instead of? Yeah. Just removing yes. Them? Yes. Yeah. You can. We probably should have started there. Uh, no, but actually, I like the pop. But go ahead and go to the add. But before uh, we do that, I just wanted to point out really quickly. Uh, so we, we haven't. Uh, this is this is our first time getting to this, in the way uh, Python. Uh, pays attention to spacing. Yeah. Um, so we talked we know- very briefly about white space, but it, yeah, now we start getting into the, the special cases. Right, because here we have a situation here where we've got a for loop here, 
in the past in C sharp, you know, you have this, this would be surrounded by uh, brackets. Yeah. Brackets, right? Which we don't have here. Python is paying attention to the equivalent here and the fact that we have this line indented right. a couple of spaces. Oh. And so that's how we indicate to Python that this is now a block of code right. um, separate from the rest. In C sharp, all, as long as it's within those brackets, it knows it's, that it's part of that loop. Right. In Python, as long as it's indented, it knows that it's part of that loop. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, which actually we, we like this because it's, it's, it's much easier to understand, right? I mean, as long as it's indented, you know it belongs to the thing that's not. So do I have to do that whenever I'm doing code in Notepad as well? Yeah, indented? so if, yeah, if you don't indent and then you bring it into idle, uh, it won't oh, know okay. where the loop starts and stops. Okay. Okay. Dale, uh, continue, sorry. Yeah, so I'm going to just pop this uh, append uh, line in here after the declaration and just print out what we have now. So I'm doing companions, and then so the built-in function for lists to add one item um, is uh, append, which is dot append. And so I'm just going to add Martha Jones and uh, see what that does. There we hey, go. Hey, it worked. And it's back. It adds to the yeah. end of the list. That's cool. Now, this, these, these simple, simple things, so popping and appending, are the way that you could dynamically change your list as the program goes on. Right. Okay. Now, Dale, if, if we wanted to give our folks some homework, I think we should probably include some popping and appending, right? Absolutely. What would we you say? Should. As the Code Warrior, it is your call. What do you want them to do? What do you want them to submit to our Google Plus group? Let's see. Be mean as you want. It's cool. <laughs> Let's let it out. Let it out. <laughs> um, well, I want them to make uh, my first example of popping work correctly. <laughs> okay. Actually, no, that's perfect. Okay. That's a good idea. Yeah. So recreate Dale's, Dale's array, uh, list, which we are going to have in our code example, and figure out why it only popped two of the entries. So, uh, so submit a, the code, and actually it was already answered in the chat room, so don't look at the chat room. <laughs> don't look at the chat room. Don't look at the chat room. Uh, submit it into our Google Plus page, and we will feature you on the next show. Oh. Okay, I get it. Yeah, like, Shh, don't look down there. <laughs> okay, I won't. I won't say it. We'll wait until the They're next cheating. episode. Yeah. Oh, great! Now everyone's. Looking. I want to share some more viewer submissions as well, and I'm going to do my own too, so that you guys can see what I came up with. It won't be a Doctor Who reference for mine. Maybe I'll do a Star Trek one. Yeah, yeah. Adele, uh, let me ask you this. So, uh, so what do we have on tap for the good folks next week? This was this was great. We had to bring them into a data structure, but now that they've got that data structure, where do you want to take them? Oh, I'm not sure. Exactly. Uh, where do you think we might want to go? Be mean, man. Be mean. Come on, let's do it. <laughs> I, I, uh, I'll take my lead off of you. Ba back behind. Oh, no, we, we won't leave you behind. But uh, not. you know what? I, I think w looking at the chat room, we're going to have to give them loops. Why, why don't we give okay. them every kind of loop oh. and we'll yes. give them every kind of yes. example? All right. Yes. Sound good? Yes. We're going to have a lot more fun now. Yeah. Oh, yay. Totally. Dale Chase from Discovery Digital Networks, thank you so very much for being our Code Warrior again. It's great to have you, and we will see you next week. Catch you guys later. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Folks, that's Yay. about it for this episode. Uh, I think, yeah, it was a cool you know, one. It, it, it's not, not too much data that, that you can't sort through it, but some really good things that you need to now go out and practice. And the way that you're going to practice that is you're going to go to our show notes page. We don't want to leave you hanging. We know that there were some people who were complaining that you couldn't see our, see our screens. Well, we're going to give you all the code that you saw during the episode. All you need to go is go to our show notes page at twit.tv slash coding101. There you'll be able to find all of our episodes. Plus, if you click the episodes, you'll see where we have a link to our GitHub. We're going to give you each and every single exercise file so that you can copy it over to your idol and be happy. Guess what else? What? We're still on iTunes. Yeah, we are. That's right. Yeah, buddy. I don't know why they haven't kicked us off yet, but they haven't. They haven't it's, got on. <laughs> yeah, so search us on iTunes. Uh, we're under video. I think we're on audio, too, maybe? Yeah, yeah video. Yeah. We, got, we got high definition video, yes. medium definition video, and audio. So you can always download the version that you want. And please, please make sure you subscribe and tell your friends about us because we were doing really well in the <laughs> iTunes store for a while. We want to get back up there. You know, coding 101, coding is in generally something that we should all know about. Speaking of something that we should all know about, we should all know about our Google Plus community. If you're not a member of our Google Plus community, why the heck aren't you? Shannon, where can they find us? That's over at gplus.to slash twitcoding101. Yeah, and if nice you're... Nice and easy to know. And we have so many good examples mm -hmm. 
in there from everyone. Sorry we couldn't get to all of them today. I guess we could have had time if we if we wanted to, but there are plenty of great examples in there to get you kind of get your feet in the water as far as it goes with Python. Yeah, and the nice thing about Python, folks, is that if someone gives you the code inside that group, you actually just can copy and paste it. It's yes. really that simple. Again, one of the advantages just of, like I did. <laughs> uh, like of stubs, of an interpreted language. Now, Google is not the only place to find us. You can also find us on Twitter, where uh, if you follow us, you'll be able to find out what we're going to be doing each and every single week. You'll find out what we're doing in future modules, and this is the important part. Remember when we went from C Sharp to Python, we had those two wild card episodes that were spectacular. I mean, we talked to Liam, uh, Liam Kennedy, then we talked to uh, our, our very own Randall, uh, Schwartz. Randall Schwartz. He was so good. And you know, we show you why you want to learn these things. We show you people who are actually professionals who are in the field who are doing it now. So follow me at, that's at Padre SJ. And I am at Snubs. Yeah, and finally, if you uh, if you watch us live, you get to see all the things that we do before and after the show. Yes. You can catch us each Thursday at 1.30 Pacific time here at live.twit.tv. And we're also on the chat room. We've been watching it during the show, and we like to answer questions whenever you guys have them. That's over at irc.twit.tv, and you can definitely jump in there during the live show. Yeah. Until next time, I'm Father Robert Balliser. I'm Shannon Morse. End of line. End of line.